much. Okay, um, when I was younger, I did not know that I had ADHD. I did not know what that was. But I did know that I very often did things that would make one member of my family say, Kevin, what the hell could you possibly have been thinking? <laughs> so this is a story about one of those times that my family reminds me of every time we get back together. In 1988, my parents couldn't afford to get me into the dorms at NYU for my freshman year. So they had me move in with my older brother, about five years older than me, my brother Dave, and he was not thrilled <laughs> to have his little brother in his way in his horrendous bachelor pad in near Coney Island, right? <laughs> Uh, Dave and I, you know, we were pretty much existing on Guinness, and uh, Dave used to say, well, you know, it might have more nutrients than anything else we could afford, and we were usually too drunk in general to ever fact check that, but <laughs> it seemed, seemed like a pretty good idea. Um, you know, uh, there came a day when Dave actually did buy some groceries. Uh, <laughs> it was about my second week at NYU, but he told me right away, he was like, Kev, I got some groceries. Never eat my food without asking me first. So I peeked in the fridge and there wasn't much there, but I did notice there was a giant jar of whole jumbo pickles. Now, that week I was particularly nervous because I had my very first assignment at film school. <laughs> NYU, it was a little strange. Well, it probably still is. They had a role that freshmen were not allowed yet to be making the big boy films, right? So we had to work with Super 8, this film stock, this tiny, tiny little film stock that was created by Kodak around about 1960 and was no longer made by 1988. It was obsolete and, and you, the equipment wasn't being sold in stores anymore. So on the very first day of film class, all the kids were freaking out because no one knew where to get a Super 8 camera. But our teacher was just this guy who was eternally happy because he had just escaped from the Soviet Union. <laughs> Mr. Kandinsky, and he was like, guys, life is good. Just go to a pawn shop and hang, you know, go, do, go through their dumpsters. <laughs> well, fortunately, my dad in Ohio did find a Super 8 camera at a yard sale and FedExed it to us. But then the next day, Mr. Kandinsky said, oh, I forgot to tell you a few other things. Your first projects are going to have to be in-camera edits. Uh, and what that means is that you, th the Super 8 editing bay and the Super 8 projector were even rarer and harder to find than <laughs> Super 8 cameras. So no one was going to be able to have those things. So we had to edit the movies in this way. You had one shot at every shot in your movie. You had one take of every shot, and you had to make sure that when you press start and stop on that shot, it would be lined up so that the next shot would be continuous. <laughs> in other words, we were, you know, kind of making, we were doing this sort of editing that you might enjoy from, say, Thomas Edison. <laughs> And then the other thing was, NYU owned one Super 8 projector. So we were all going to be viewing our very first assignment for class in front of the class with everyone else. 
So I was a nervous wreck because, you know, I was this kid from Ohio and NYU was just filled with all these rich kids from cities around the world. I was like, oh my God, I have to make a good first impression. So I diligently wrote this story about a guy who is, he has a bottle of pills and he looks at it and it's heart medication and it says, if he doesn't have one of these pills at 3 p.m. sharp every day, his heart will explode immediately, right? <laughs> the twist is at the end, he misread the label and in fact what it meant was that the bottle will explode, right? <laughs> So, very cute, not a very, you know, I mean, a five minute movie or whatnot, but on that day, on that day I had set aside for shooting this thing, I learned how stressful filmmaking actually is. I didn't have any friends yet at school, so I was gonna have to do this solo, right? And just like the guy in the movie, I was against the clock, right? because I had to have it done on this particular day in order to get the film to Kodak to be processed in time to get it to class, right? And I had to also time it so that it was, you know, I, I would be done by 7 p.m. when my brother would come home because if he came home and found the apartment a wreck of a little film set that I created, especially if he came home with a lady friend, forget about it, right? So that day, I was just running around like a crazy man. I'd shoot a shot, think, okay, I think that's where it should end, and I'll have to keep in mind where the next one should begin. Then realize I didn't have a prop, and run out and be sweating, and get that prop, and come back and continue. I was in the fog of war. And it finally came time to shoot the pill bottle, which I had carefully, you know, typed out a little, you know, the, the warning label on it. And I put it in front of the camera and realized this camera cannot take close-ups. <laughs> it's just permanently one size fit all medium shot and it could, just could not read the label. So I'm like, oh my God. God, oh my, what do I do? I'm just thinking and thinking because time's running out. And finally I thought, well, this is just gonna have to be one fucking big <laughs> bottle of pills. <laughs> About the size of a gallon jar of jumbo pickles. <laughs> So I go into the fridge and I get the pickles and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, wait, this thing has to explode. I have to like get rid of it entirely. So what am I gonna do? I mean, I, I, okay, maybe if I get rid of all evidence that, you know, of pickles and jar, Dave will just forget that he ever bought this gargantuan jar in the first place. So I'm thinking, all right, all right, all right. Uh, now, how do I get rid of the pickles? Because I wasn't gonna <laughs> eat all these pickles. I mean, they were jumbo. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, I, you know what? I will just put them in the trash. But then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm so new in this apartment. Dave has not yet gotten around to teaching me where the trash goes when it leaves the apartment. So I can't just leave all this evidence sitting in the kitchen trash. I don't want like the ghost of pickles past roaming around the place and giving me up, right? So finally I'm like, oh my God, okay. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. I start to go into that meltdown mode because I'm like, I've got about 20 minutes to get this shot finally. And that's when I had a eureka moment. I thought, I know, I'll take him to the bathroom, put them in the toilet and flush them down because pickles are shaped like poop. <laughs> So without thinking twice, I run to the bathroom and just start flushing away. One, two, three, four, eight jumbo-sized pickles! <laughs> now you're probably thinking, wow, they went down that easy? Not at all! <laughs> I had to really be sticking my hand down there and fucking I'm down that toilet! Now, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, gee, they're not exactly the same consistency <laughs> as poop, are they? But I was in the mode of, oh my God, just finish what you started. So I did. 
and I got the shots, and I got the apartment all cleaned up in time for Dave not to have even known anything had happened there. Now, about three days later, I go to class, and Ken Dinsky and the class loved my movie, and I wouldn't have ended up in the state, the sketch comedy group, if it hadn't been for the guys that night, or that day in my class being like, this guy's really funny, we should do stuff with him. So I was all drunk from my celebrations that day when I came home to my brother, and you know what? All was not well in the apartment. <laughs> Dave was kind of sweaty and angry looking, and he said, we've got a real problem with the toilet. Did you give birth to a haggis? I said, oh no. I have no idea what that must be. Well, I was kind of dying inside because Dave was trying everything for days and we were having to go to the bathroom in other people's places and <laughs> the landlord didn't want to pay for a plumber so finally my brother was like, I'll pay for a plumber and I'm like, oh my God, uh, this is all my fault but yeah, well, Dave will be none the wiser. <laughs> so the plumber comes over <laughs> and he's this very friendly Italian guy. He's got one of those big roto rooter things, the metallic snakes, and he says, oh yeah, this thing could rip through a cow. <laughs> and he's stabbing it down there in the toilet, and he's like, holy cow, there really is something <laughs> thick in there. And he's beating it through and beating it through. He's like, oh, I'm getting through, I'm getting through. And then all of a sudden he says, whoa, will you look at this? <laughs> kind of leans down into the toilet and Dave and I are like, what, what is it? And he picks up a, a, a green, fleshy bit of vegetable matter. And he says, you're not gonna believe this, but it, it looks like a pickle. <laughs> He's like, yep, yep, that is a pickle. And then he says, and look at that. And dozens of pieces of pickle have now floated to the surface of the toilet. And Dave's looking at me, and he says, huh, because I noticed earlier today that a giant jar of pickles that I got last week is missing. And that's when I said, oh yeah, could be from when I flush those pickles. <laughs> Dave said, you flush them. I said, yeah, yeah, now, now, now that I think of it. <laughs> the plumber was amazed. Dave said, and you think that could be what it is? I said, yeah, it does look like and Dave said, like a toilet full of pickles. <laughs> I couldn't explain why I had done what I did. But now I know that people with ADHD, when there's too many details at once and we go into overdrive, sometimes what happens is that critical consciousness just slumps over in the driver's seat and the subconscious grabs the wheel. <laughs> and the thing about the subconscious is, its reasoning can sometimes be a little special. <laughs> so, you know, I have to hear it every time. Every time I do anything else that makes my family think, why the hell did he do that? They'll come out and say, oh yeah could be when I flush those pickles. <laughs> so, so listen, the next time you do something that you can't explain, raise a little toast to me in the weird part of your brain, but not with a drink, maybe, with a pickle. <laughs> Thank you.
Kevin Allison. <laughs>